Let's go home before we get mugged. <laughs> hello and welcome to my channel. Um, I have just been out and grabbed some bananas because we are gonna do a photo today. I'm gonna head outside and as I do it, I thought I would answer some questions along the way. So this will kind of be a Q&A video, a little bit of a vlog, full on my day. I have for this photo plan to go to a spot that is um, pretty close to where we live here in East London. Um, I saw it already some months ago the first time and I took a picture it's here and it has like a really really nice color and kind of texture and mood so I've been wanting to do a photo with it for a while. Okay I have grabbed some things that I thought might work for this photo so I have this that's from an old one from Cezanne as well as this one, and then I also have this coat that I've been like, I don't really wear it anymore, but I just think like it's kind of fun. Um, it's obviously a fake fur coat, but there's something about the texture that I quite enjoy. So yeah, I'm, I'm like thinking of these uh, choices, which one to <laughs> go for. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think this could work? Because you see, this, this I like, the hood part. I've already um, prepared myself a little bit. Wait, I have like put a bow in my hair and I don't know, it's somehow stuck with me. I don't normally, no, that's not true. I do wear my <laughs> top that normally bows in my hair. Um, and I just like to have that in a photo again, because I think all these little details and pops of colors you can add, I just find that it makes, it makes a big difference. One of the first things I usually do um, before I take a photo is that I sketch it out so I know what I'm gonna... Why do I still have this coat on? <laughs> um, I sketch it out in my little um, sketching pad. So I have this little <clears throat> pad for all my photo ideas. So I think I'm gonna sketch the photo out first. I actually have two ideas that I thought we might do today and while well, I sketch it, hey, then I could answer a question. Okay, yes, that's a good idea. So let me just grab some, grab a pen and I'll answer a question. Okay, so let's see. Um, how to edit images like a pro? Um, I think when it comes to editing images, you just have to try out a lot, um, just like get into the habit of doing it, of taking photos and, um, edit them because it's all about, I think, finding your own style um, and that just takes time like and of course watching maybe some YouTube tutorials on it and um, trying to mimic kind of the, if there is some photos that you really like, then trying to imitate that at first I think is a good step to do. Okay, so the idea for the photo is called banana wings and the idea is I'm gonna stand as I usually do in these wings photos, just with my back um, to the camera. Ooh, fancy drawing here. Okay, no, I get, I got nervous now because I turned on the camera and I got like pressure to do a pretty photo. Okay, it's not being a, not a pretty photo, but okay, I almost feel like I don't want to show this too. <clears throat> okay, so here <laughs> is my first idea. It's called banana wings and it's basically me holding some bananas as wings. Let's see how that will turn out. And the second idea I had was be me standing again, uh, just looking at a wall and then having all these like mini photos flying in the air because I'm a very nostalgic person. And then I thought about like, I often cling on to memories and moments. So that would be like a nice concept to illustrate that. Okay, here we go, finally ready. Um, I've got my camera bag. I've got all the props, got the coat, got myself, <laughs> got my ideas. Let's head outside. So 
so right behind me that door is where I did this other photo back in the day um and it's quite a lot of people here it's quite busy um so I'm a little nervous how it's gonna turn out but um just have to suck it up and get to it Okay, so there's a bit of a problem um, right at my spot where I was gonna sit up my camera and do my photo. There's this guy who's just lurking around. I think he's sketching or something, but he's exactly in the spot I was gonna be. And I just feel so uncomfortable, um, especially there's like somebody right there. Um, so now I'm not completely sure what to do. Uh, if I should just wait that he goes away or if I should try to find a different spot, I'm not sure. Okay, so I just checked and the guy is still there. He's now sit down on the ground, so I don't think he's moving anytime soon. I found this other spot though, which is like a total um, uh, location that I've been hunting actually. There's also somebody lurking around there. I don't know, what is it today? With all those places <laughs> I could take a photo, there is somebody hanging around. But let's see if he's, maybe, maybe he went away. <laughs> from the editing uh, room. <laughs> I have just looked through all the material you're just about to see and just wanted to give a quick heads up that um, if it looks a little bit weird around my eyes, it's because I did not look in a mirror carefully enough with my glasses on before filming this. So I have mascara like all over my eyelid. So it looks a little funky, but um, yeah, that is just um, how it is. <laughs> Hello again. So it is now a few days ago that I was out taking those photos um, and now I'm gonna edit them and answer the questions you sent in on Instagram. There were so many really good questions. I don't think I'm gonna be able to answer all of them, but I tried to choose questions that were similar and answer those and also some that I thought were quite interesting. But okay, I actually don't know if I'm gonna be able to edit and talk in a cohesive way at the same time. So I think I'll do the Q&A here first, then edit, then maybe put those things together uh, when I edit this video. Um, let's see, but stick around till the end where I'll show them how the photos turned out. Hmm? Yes. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Um, the first question, there were two questions that were kind of similar, so I'm gonna, or actually more than two, but anyways, the first question. How did you make the switch from promoting your knitting business to content creator? How did you start making photos? What inspired you to try it? So, well, life is a very funny thing in the sense that it usually doesn't go as you planned. So I thought my dream for the longest time was to become a contemporary dancer and choreographer. And I studied for that many, many years. But what I hadn't uh, <laughs> thought was gonna happen was that when I finally graduated, I suddenly didn't really feel like pursuing that as a career anymore and I don't know what happened but it left me feeling so confused and lost after university like this thing that I had put in so much work for and I felt so passionate about and was really driven to make that into my life and career for some reason um, it just didn't feel like that anymore and Right at that time, I also moved to Stockholm to be with my boyfriend who I had just uh, met recently back then. And I also got 
taken out of my familiar context and so many questions about what do I want to do with my life, what am I good at, what do I enjoy and just what kind of values do I want to have in my life and, and what it is what is it that I actually want to do? What is it that I'm meant to be doing? All these questions came at once and I felt so much guilt for not wanting to pursue the thing that I had put so much effort and time into. So what I did then was, okay, I took a break. I did a few also productions like as a choreographer, but at the same time I started to sell my knitwear because um, I've always been knitting. And that's also where the name Kutova Kika comes from. Kutova means knitting and Kika that's my nickname, my actual name is Veronica. And <clears throat> then I did that for like a year, was really confused, like lots of questions, what am I supposed to do? Am I still, should I still do the dance thing? Is this just something now, maybe I'm tired after studying and all that. But then I was doing the knitwear thing, I had my website, I went to markets and tried to sell it. And I realized that to gain an audience for it, and if I want to try to make a living with that, I had to, make people know about it and use these digital platforms like Instagram to market my knitwear. And then I realized, okay, like I need to start put more effort into my photos, like, duh. <laughs> um, and then I started to do that. But again, life never go as you plan. So then I just got super into making photos. I have always been a very visual person and I even had like a knitting blog back in the day and I always really liked to take the photos with like the old iPad I had my sister pose or I posed and she took the photos and I think then when I discovered that passion again and that I could take a photo I could edit it and share it with people so quickly and get feedback and start to build community it was so fascinating and exciting to me especially because I was sitting in Stockholm where I didn't really know anybody to find this online community. So the switch from being first a choreographer to then a knitwear designer to a content creator, it was painful, it was messy. There was so much guilt and so much doubt and uncertainty. And I think we often just get to see the success stories or stories of people when you've already figured everything out. But I can just tell you it was really a struggle so if you're going through something like that and you don't know what direction to take or what you're supposed to do then I absolutely know how that feels um, it can be so confusing but the only thing I feel like helped me was then I just well first of all try to listen to my intuition what came naturally to me and what I was actually excited about what I didn't have to push to do um, but that it sort of pulled me in, if that makes sense. Um, and secondly, I think it just takes time also, honestly, um, and patience. And that can be so difficult when you just want to know, like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> but um, just taking one step at a time. And you never know, like, when one door closes, another opens. That's always um, what I try to think. And now I'm really happy that I'm doing what I'm doing. And I have the life where I get to be a content creator and self-employed and I get to use a lot of the skills that I learned from my education and also from trying to have my own business as a knitwear designer. So everything kind of just came together, but it was not at all obvious to me and um, it is not easy. It, it takes a while. I've been now doing this for over three years, so it's definitely taken me a while to come to this point. Okay, I feel like if all my answers are gonna be that long, we definitely need some coffee. So let's make some coffee and I'll try to answer another question. So somebody asked what the uh, watermark, the little hummingbird, why I chose that. And it's actually the logo that I had for um, the knitwear brand I had with Wikika. Um, and it was because right at that time when I was trying to figure out what uh, logo I would have. I was in San Francisco where I saw a little hummingbird for the first time in my life and they was just such a fascinating little creature and I don't know I could relate to it like it's very fast and small you know like tick, tick, tick. and I often have been told I speak very fast and I'm kind of quick in my moves so I just felt some kind of a kinship with that. <laughs> mm, good. Uh, challenges you face over no likes or views, how to get a light, uh, life out of it and your work seen. 
And somebody also asked, how happy does the number of likes make you? Likes equal success, question mark. So yes, of course, it would be very false of me to say that the likes and views that I don't get affected by that because um, I do and it does inform me in the direction I take um, of my content uh, to some extent, of course. Um, but I really, I try to not fall in the trap of seeking validation from that and because it is like this whole social media and the numbers and always trying to be more popular and somehow that can quickly become popularity that you start thinking that is somehow the self-worth or, or not even yourself, well yeah, self-worth and the worth of your work because those can be very difficult to separate and especially if you have um, photos or content or whatever that you put out that is not really work but it's more personal and even my stuff even though it is sort of my work it feels very personal to me so I think it's difficult to separate those two and then the whole struggle of when it's not going so great or you're like oh like you're not getting finding that audience that you wish you'd have or um, so I've always tried to, even when I was um, a much, much uh, more in the beginning, I would always go try to like analyze and look at, okay, what are the things that are kind of working? For example, okay, when I post a photo that is more bright and airy and has some like negative space in it, that usually does better. Or, wow, this photo like really got more engagement than usually what was that like oh there was more texture or more depth in the photo or it was very easy to see what was going on like very kind of you can be very concrete about it and then you can take that let that inform your process and still keep true to what you want to do and being authentic to you so that you don't start making things just out of the popularity and just trying to um, gain a lot of likes because then it's like for what I think the interesting thing is to see like what kind of things communicate and resonate with people because um, that is super fascinating I think and um, also with videos like the thumbnails and the, all that stuff like you learn as you go okay let's move into the living room uh, somebody asked I just saw that do you know how to take pictures of dogs and short answer is no, I do not. <laughs> I love dogs, but uh, I don't know how to take pictures of dogs, but I have two cats, Luna and Bella, that sometimes um, are in my photos. And with them, the only thing I found helpful is um, to have some snacks in my hands or put them on the table or wherever, and then just hope that they might sit still for a while, maybe look into the camera, but it's such a, you can never, uh, I did once a collaboration for these little uh, collars for them and to get that photo with them wearing the collars both at the same time like there's a reason they say never work uh, with children or animals in show business because it was so stressful <laughs> we have so many pillows in our couch it's like almost you can't even <laughs> fit in here i think it's like my parents house my mom she's like a pillow fanatic they have so many pillows like when you go in their couch like you will not even be able to sit in the couch even though it's like a huge couch just because there are so many pillows ah okay next one how do you choose your background and outfit to match the match so well so i often plan the locations i'm going to take my photos beforehand um, so i know what kind of colors will be there and then i usually take that into consideration and also i usually wear quite neutral color tones um, in my outfits, so then that will just fit well most, most background. Okay, let's do a few more. Um, how do you feel when a picture doesn't turn out exactly how you want it? How do you deal with that? Um, I get frustrated. <laughs> I think like, oh, this was such a waste of time and um, I'm just angry. <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah, it of course it's like frustrating when something doesn't work out and especially if you already did the whole photo and it didn't turn out as you wanted. But now I try to think of uh, that's just part of the process. You'll have to, that's gonna happen. And it's just um, dealing with it and seeing it as just one step in making the next thing uh, something that is going to be really exciting and good. So um, I try to just see it as not a waste of time, but actually that it's very necessary. And actually the photos that haven't turned out good sometimes can teach you more than the photos that might turn out great. <laughs> okay, I think it's time for one last question. Okay, where do you see taking your brand? Do you think you'll ever teach an online course? At 
the moment, I'm really happy with where I am with my, I guess, brand, if you say so, uh, or if you want to call it that. I think I have some clarity in what I stand for and the things that I'm doing at the moment, which is, you know, on Instagram, I do my photos and then I talk about them and give tips and share findings here on YouTube. So they complement each other. And what I would hope to see do the next year is maybe slowly start thinking about having my own business or own products or something that I could um, offer instead of only relying on doing collaborations, even though I really enjoy that as well. Um, but like looking at sort of like a five year horizon or like where I would like to take it next, that is something that I would be interested in, even though I don't quite know yet in what shape or form that would be. And um, if I'm gonna plan or if I'm gonna do an online course, then I've definitely thought about that. And it does sound like something that would be really fun and something I feel like now I've also practiced more uh, talking about these things and sharing them. Um, so maybe, I don't know yet, I don't have anything planned at the moment, um, but that's, I mean, if that's something you'd be interested in, I would love to hear that. And um, then I could maybe think about putting something together and um, yeah, trying that out. Cause I definitely feel like here on YouTube, all the tips I gave, I. Um, Sometimes I'm not sure how to in-depth go on some topics that is maybe very, very specific. So that could be interesting to explore in an online course instead. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> and now the moment we've all been waiting for. Here is how the photos turned out. You be my chair and I'll surely sit on it. I'll bring the gin and you bring the tonic, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello. I hope they turned out good because I haven't actually edited them yet. Um, I will do that now and then insert them in here. So there's that uh, narrative falling apart. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting for you. Let me know um, if you have any other comments. And I try to, any other comments? No, any other questions <laughs> below and I can try to answer them, the ones that I didn't get a chance to answer in this video. Um, also, if you'd like to see more of my photos and come and say hi, I'm over at Kutovakika on Instagram. Um, also, um, I have two other Q&A questions. No, Q&A videos. <laughs> I cannot speak anymore. Um, I'll link them up here um, if you'd like to see those. Those are from last summer that I did. Um, okay, that is it for me now. Um, take care and see you next week. Bye!